Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Helper of men, we thank you. Lifter, we thank you. The one who raises the poor out of the dust. And sets them up in the midst of the princes. Thank you. Barrier breaker, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we just thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Some of you need to get ready because... You're carrying some big things this year. <clears throat> people don't, sometimes people don't understand why you have to teach financial management in church. And they don't know that the Bible is full of the teachings of financial management. The problem is not the blessing. The problem is your ability to sustain the blessing. Your ability to manage the blessing. That's where the challenge is. That's where the challenge is. God has blessed people who left church because of the blessing. That's odd. Because they were confused. Too much money. Didn't know what to do with it. And too much money is a relative term. Because for some people it was just one million that sent them out of church. Only one. And I said they should have waited to make it many more. <laughs> but only one sent them out of church. Because in their entire lives it didn't look like. They could ever see that. Would you still be normal when God blesses you? Can the pastor still call you and say, see me at two? Like, you know, pastor, I've been really busy these days. I'm in a business meeting. I'm on a cruise ship. Uh, yeah, pastor. Yeah, I mean, we can talk over Zoom, you know. Uh, when I'm less busy, I'll reach out. <laughs> language has changed will you be normal when God blesses you what is the blessing to you how much is the blessing okay imagine one moment that you have 100 million naira in your bank account that's one tenth of a billion You have 0 0.1 billion. Is that 0 0.1? 0 0.1 billion. Some people can't even think about it. Think about it. That's not what you put in OPE. You put it in somewhere. You put it somewhere that has an address. <laughs> Am I making some sense? Exactly. So you got to know whose shirt and tie to grab a hold of. <laughs> when your transfers are not going for two days. 100 million. What if you had that in your account? So think about that GT bank account, that Zenit, that First Bank, whatever. You have a hundred million in it. Behave how you will behave. You know, some people will be checking their account balance every moment, even in church. It's still there, it's still there, it's still there, it's still there, it's still there. Is this hundred million? How many zeros has hundred million? One, two, three, four, five, one, two, one, two. Eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No. Ah. Wait, did I count six or seven? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you start doubting yourself. But it's only a hundred. Somebody say only a hundred. Say it again. Only a hundred. One of the ways you can master money is to conquer it in your mind. You see, you're very likely to misbehave when you have big money if you haven't conquered it in your mind. Money has got influence. Money has got power. Money can move you to do things. 
So you have to be a solid person so that when money comes to meet you, money does not send you on errands. You send money on errands. Do you understand? You make money work for you. You don't allow money make you work for it. When money determines what you buy, what you possess, and how you behave, then you're working for it. But when you make money do what you want it to do, that's when you master it. Start creating and simulating figures in your mind. I remember as a young man, and I've shared this testimony before, in the university, every time I had hard currency, dollar or pound, I would step on it and make declarations. You have no power over me. In the name of Jesus, I rule over you. I must, you know, I said things like that until it became normal to me. Normal to me. So fast forward in my life, when I would see thousands of dollars or thousands of pounds selling, nothing. It didn't make my walk steps change. It didn't make me feel anything different because I had practiced through the years to master it. To master it. To master it. There are people whose attitude will change for a hundred thousand bank balance. One hundred thousand bank balance. That's lunch for ten people at Transco. Buffet. With one swipe of a card, someone has spent that as lunch for ten people. If you had one million, what would you do? Uh, excuse me, this is the third service. The third service is our leadership and economic development service. In this service, we talk about leadership. We talk about uh, building capacity. We talk about business. Okay, so uh, if you want to learn about leadership, you want to learn about economic influence, you're in the right place. If you're looking for another service, I encourage first or second service next Sunday, or you show up on Wednesday, you know, that would be good. But this service, this is what we talk about in this service, from a wide variety of subjects to prepare ourselves. It's not just praying in tongues and praying for open doors, money has come, and then you've become confused. There are people who have passed out because they saw money. Yes, they literally just passed out. <sighs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> and the pastor. Now, my question is, what quantity of money will make you pass out? Some people just begin to sweat. Tears just begin to come out of their eyes. Things, reflex, things just begin to happen on their own accord. When they see big money, what is big money to you? One day you'll be a lender of money. Did somebody hear what I said? One day, you will run a business that lends money to people. That someone is praying to have favor, that they will give the money, and the prayer is about you. Oh, my God. Amen. One day, you'll be able to tell someone, I can pay your flight ticket to attend a conference in Australia. And you say, I'm sponsoring 10. Communicate with my office staff and get your tickets. Oh my God. It's you I'm talking about. Yes. Start thinking it. And you know what? People who have mastered money treat small money with big respect. You didn't hear what I said. People who have mastered money Treat small money with big respect. Because one of the biggest mistakes that people make is when little money enters their hands, they treat it lightly in expectation of big money. But sometimes big money is a combination of a lot of small money well managed and multiplied. There are people who have lost opportunities in this life because God really provided for them in small pieces at a time, but they didn't know how 
to manage and multiply what God brought into their hands. You've heard people talk about millions and how they did jobs and millions came and you're feeling sorry for yourself because yours comes in 5,000, 7,520, 10,000, 15,000, 20, 50, 71, you know. But think about it. You've had that so many times within a period of time. And if you were careful with appropriating that money, you will realize that you probably had more than someone who said they made one million once in a long while. Your money attitude must change this year. Your money attitude must improve. Today I'm speaking about volatile millionaires. You've seen the advert and I've started already. There are people who make money seasonally. And when a certain thing is in season, maybe they have a certain contract with a government, with uh, an institution or something. Or maybe it's a certain job that is giving them a lot of money and they have this job for two years, have this job for three years and there's quite some traffic of money coming in. They save up and it looks like they have big money. The possession of money in numbers is not what makes you a millionaire, actually. You are a millionaire when you have learned the art of multiplying millions, not just making a million or saving a million. You're not a millionaire yet if you don't have the skills with which you can multiply millions. You are a millionaire if you can sit and think and say, I want 10 million in six months. And these are the skills I have. These are the problems I can solve. These are the services I can render. And this is how I'm going to market them. These are the prices I have on them. And I will endeavor to sell them in six months and bring in this number of millions. Being a millionaire is no wishful thinking. Who doesn't want to think like, I, I, I mean, everyone wants to be. But we're not talking about wishful thinking. We're talking about active thinking. And by active thinking, you know the skills you possess. You develop them to where they become highly priced. You know the problems they can solve. You know the services you can develop from those skills. You know who to sell to, in what quantities to create millions. I was speaking to one of my protégés in Lagos uh, mainland. Lagos mainland. She's into health drinks, including parfait and all. She's on the mainland, you know. And so one day I'm having a session with her in Lagos and I said to her, how much is one cup? And she said, I said, how many cups do you need to sell to make a million? How many can you sell in a day? Now, let's choose a figure. Let's say you sold parfait. How much is the price for one cup? 3,000. Fair enough. So 3,000. How many cups do I need to sell to make a million? 1,000 cups. No, no, no. 1,000 cups will give me 3 million, right? So if I sold 300 and maybe 350 or 330 something, right, I will make a million. So 335 or 33, 35. Let's round it up. Let's say 340 cups, okay? So if I sold 340 cups, I will make 1 million. Ah, let's think about it. How can I sell 340 cups every day? 340 cups of parfait. I'm going to look out for people who can do bulk purchase. What kinds of people can do bulk purchase? You're going to have to rack your brain and think about people who can do bulk purchase. What kinds of people can easily pay 3,000 a cup for parfait? What kinds of places do I need to display my parfait? What kinds of food will parfait go with? And so I look for the places where those kinds of foods are sold 
and then I strike a deal with them to have my parfait there. Because the people who likely buy or who buy that food are very likely to buy my parfait. Can I have parfait right opposite or right beside suya joints? Uh, because stuff like parfait would not readily be found around those kinds of places. How about people who sell fish and fries? With coleslaw or salad, can I have parfait? Parfait looks like something that will blend very well with fish and fries. Can I have a stand around there? Okay, I'm going to have to work hard to think of 50 to 100 different places where I can have my product. And don't forget, we're looking at 350 cups. If I had 50, let's even take 20. If I had 20 places, apart from people who order from me directly, where I can have my parfait, it means I only need to have about 17 or 18 cups in each place that has. Now, 20 places, if I had 20 cups, would be 400. Would be 400. How can I sell 350 cups of parfait every day? And should I succeed? I'm going to be pulling home a minimum of a million Every day. Every day. If I sold like that only 15 times in a month, only 15 times out of 30 days or 31, then I am thinking of about 15 million. Next question. How do I keep my customers? How do I reward my customers? What can I do to not only sell, but have a relationship with my customers? Because in marketing psychology, it is said that the ability to keep a customer is greater than the ability to make a sale. Sometimes people make a sale and that's their last sale ever. But when you keep a customer, you never stop making sales. How do I keep my customer? You see what we're talking about now? This person is on her way to becoming a millionaire. So this is not wishful thinking. So now, in doing an analysis of our parfait, we're going to have to pick up that cup. What's the packaging? Is the packaging inspiring enough? What's the label on it? Is it good enough? Okay, what's the quality of the parfait? We have someone in this church who is in the Lagos Island, not mainland now, Island, and she makes fantastic parfait. The parfait is so good. I was in Lagos a couple of days back with my wife, and so she came to see us and brought souvenir parfaits. Oh, my God. Please bring more souvenir parfaits. And I made sure I brought back one of the packs to Calabar. It is so thick that if you turn that cup upside down, it will take quite a while for that thing to find its way out. That's how thick that parfait is. Of course, she used to be here. She used to be in the choir. You know her, Augusta. Her parfait, now she does not sell one. She has branded it so very much that she doesn't sell one. She can't sell one. She said she sells how many? She sells in in batches, you know, she sells in batches, maybe three, four, and so on. And one is, uh, I've forgotten how many thousands. Yeah. So I think she makes for each sale, it's like from 12,000 and above. Okay, so in batches of, say, three or four cups or something like that. Oh, yeah. No, two, 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 12,000. One cup's about 6,000. For that quality of parfait. Oh yeah? That's not parfait for the poor. <laughs> it's parfait for the big boys who have worked very hard, tired from Lagos traffic, and going home eating like big boys. And she's made a fortune. A fortune. Fortune. From selling parfait. She lives in Lekki. That business pays her bills in Lekki. Uh, it is possible. 
It is possible. It is possible. So, let's rewind. What do you sell? You can write that question because I like you to think about it when you go home. What do I sell? Write it. What do I sell? Now, don't limit the word sell to the traditional mentality of selling. You can sell ideas. Do you understand what I'm saying? You can sell ideas. You can sell behavior modification techniques. Counseling is huge. In the United States, counselors, I mean, that's a big thing. Very big thing. If I was practicing, well, I'm a member of American Psychological Association, but if I was practicing as a psychologist with my studio and all, you will register to have sessions. The sessions are not cheap at all. At all. Some of the sessions, maybe you're talking of like $1,000 per session, and somebody's case might need several sessions, 6 to 10 or something, for one person. Oh, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Be careful how you treat me. <laughs> Interestingly, you get all that for free. It's the call. <laughs> yes, it's the call. I'll talk to some people another day. But don't look down on people. When you're served, when you're being served, just be thankful to God that you're being served. Everyone is not the same. There are people who are prepared well for what they give, for what they do. They build capacity for what they do. You're going to get angry that some pastor is getting a private jet as a gift. Do you know the kind of value he adds to people? You don't know. Shh. You don't know the value he adds to people. There are people adding value to people. Yes. There are people raising solid people, raising highly successful people by the teachings that they have given. You can sit and argue all day, but the people who are the beneficiaries know what they have benefited. And you cannot be the judge of how somebody wants to honor their teacher. Do you understand? You cannot. You can't be the judge of how somebody wants to honor his teacher. You might think, oh, what's it about this teaching? Somebody else has greatly benefited from it and feels obligated to come back and say thank you. This thank you has come in private jets. This thank you has come in cars. This thank you has come in houses fully built and, you know, house keys given. It has come in, this thank you can come in millions of naira. This thank you has even come in billions of naira. It may mean nothing to you, but the beneficiaries know what they have received and what they have become. Because someone who can give a private jet, how much does he have? He's not complaining. It's you who is observing what a fellow citizen like you has done for somebody that is complaining. You know what I want to do for you? Break the poverty mindset from you. Always look at yourself in good light. Believe that you will be the one who will do big things very soon. Think like that. Those who think like that don't have time for small talk. No, they don't have time for small talk. What do you sell? What do I sell? If you sew, don't say I sell clothes. That's not really what you sell. What does the sale of clothes do? What problem does it solve? You see, you have to look at yourself from the bigger picture. What does it do? What's the quality of what I sell? Another question. What's the quality of what I sell? 
what kinds of people can buy from me? What kinds of, what's the quality of what I sell? What kinds of people can buy from me? I usually tell the people who sow, I said, take a Dolce & Gabbana shirt or dress. How come this dress sells for 250000 What I sow sells for 2500 What is the difference? Apart from the name, what is the difference? If you cannot analyze the difference, you're very likely not going to be able to rise to that level of wisdom. Because wisdom is the ability to decipher difference. Some people have not learned yet how to differentiate between this and this. They dismiss everything. It's the same now. What is special here? No, you don't have the eyes to see things that are expensive. Take a Zegna tie. Huh? Bring a Pierre Cardin shoe. Bring an original Prada. And keep it beside Prada. <laughs> Analyze the difference. Bring Taylor and Swift and keep it beside Taylor Loron. Taylor Loron. <laughs> and if you can decipher the difference, then you're on your way to improvement. Because you will never improve if you don't know how to decipher difference. What's it about the fabric? Maybe this other fabric causes heat unnecessarily. This other one can breathe. Choice of fabric. Choice of colors. Usability. What kinds of occasions will this clothing? It's only in Nigeria that we wear anything. I mean, under the midday sun, on my street, I see people with winter dressing. Winter. I mean, what I will wear in New York in November, December, January, February is what I see people wear in tropical Africa under the midday sun, very hot sun. Because in Nigeria, we primarily dress for fashion, not for season. Do you understand that? Yeah, we primarily dress for fashion. I was driving through Unical the other day and... I almost stopped to have a chat with this young girl because I really felt for her, you know. So but I said, well, you know, let me just go. The Lord help her. It was very hot, and she was wearing a winter, winter coat, like, and a big winter coat. I'm like, uh, what's the idea? <laughs> big winter coat. It's fashion. Sincerely. Some of you don't have good friends. This year, change your friends. So when you show up with a winter coat in the afternoon, so say, bro, come, come, come. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> Hallelujah. So number one, I said, what do I sell? Number two, what's the quality of what I sell? Number three, what kind of people can buy from me? Did I ask another question? Not yet? Then I said you have to be able to decipher difference. If someone is selling her parfait for 6000 a plate, and she has such a heavy traffic, and this person is selling hers for 1005 or 2000 or 25 as the case may be, or 3000 and it's not selling so much. What is the difference? What is the difference? I should be able to know what the difference is. Can I upgrade my skills? Every time you upgrade your skills, it reflects in your solutions and services. It reflects in your solutions and services. You're very likely to move next level if you update the skills that you possess. You're very likely to move next level if you update the skills that you possess. Every one of us is rewarded at the level 
at which we are visible. Every one of us is rewarded at the level at which we are visible. Let me explain this. You constantly function at a level, and there are people who see you at that level. The people who see you at that level pay you according to that level. If you want to be paid more, you have to move from that level to another where you can be seen by a different kind of people who have the ability to pay you on a higher level. And I'm saying that one of the things that commands a progression from a lower level of visibility to a higher level of visibility is to improve on your skills. If you don't have a skill and you're wishing for money, you are very likely going to become a thief. So to not be a thief, you need a skill. You need a skill. And don't limit skill to soap making. No, it's not those kinds of skills I'm talking about. I didn't say soap making is bad, but that's not what I'm talking about. Whatever you can use to solve problems, to create solutions in an organized manner is a skill. Is a skill. Some of you can write. But it's only love letters that you've been writing, you know. Now, expand it. Write novels, fiction novels. Write scripts and earn big money. Netflix is buying scripts, buying stuff, buying, you know, people's... Update what you do until it becomes visible on a high level. You can sell scripts to Hollywood. You can say, and of course, there are many different movie industries. It's not just Nollywood, Bollywood, uh, Hollywood. No, there are many other movie industries around the world looking for very good scripts, inspiring scripts, write scripts and sell. Write books and sell them. Can you write a book that solves a problem so well that a piece of it goes for 5,000? And if you're going to sell 1,000 pieces, that's 5 million. If you had five books selling in one year, that average, maybe one is five million, sorry, one is 5,000, the other maybe 2,000, you have one 3,000, you have another one 2,000, five, three, eight, two, maybe on average of 12,000 if you sell one copy each. If you sold 1,000 copies only, 1,000 copies only, that would be 12 million in one year. 12 million. Listen, as I'm talking, some people are tired in their minds already. You cannot make money if you don't have an active thinking faculty. You have to be able to think it. You have to be able to accommodate it. Expand your mind to accommodate possibilities. So when we're talking, think about yourself. Put yourself in perspective. What skills do I have? What can I do? What improvements do I need? Where do I need to tweak my skills? Who can I sell to? How much can I sell? What kinds of problems can I solve? And how much can I draw in? How much can I draw in? Now, there are people into cryptocurrency. I know, I, I mean, you, you can't stick around Pastor Power, for example, and not hear about cryptocurrency, <laughs> you know, and quite a number of people into one form of trading or another. Now, so, uh, crypto, crypto simply refers to uh, encrypted technologies, right, uh, that have been used to maybe create coins that function as money in the digital space and so on. So all these cryptographic systems have created these coins and people trade with them and so on and so forth. So encryption algorithms and uh, cryptographic uh, technologies utilized to create coins and then they all have many different names ethereum and this and that wiki card wiki this and that 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 and the list goes on and on and on now the thing about making money and if you're very good with trading you can make a lot of money now not everyone actually trades some people just hold coins right so the buy coins that have a future hold it and when the coins appreciate in value maybe might rise a thousand percent two thousand percent even five thousand percent so you can spend fifty dollars to buy a coin that in the process of time does very well rises a thousand percent and how much is that going to be fifty dollars
Okay, a, a thousand percent of fifty dollars will be five hundred dollars. That's rise. So if it was like ten thousand, would be like five thousand dollars, and sometimes can even be much, 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 much more. Right now, the thing is, you can check your wallet and realize that coins that you bought maybe a couple months back or a year ago have all reason, and you maybe have ten thousand dollars in your wallet. How much is a dollar as at today? Exchange rate. Huh? Yesterday was 1,320. Two days ago. Okay, so you see, today, 1,350. So if you had $1,000, how much is that? 1,350,000. If you had $10,000, that's thirteen million five hundred millionaire, right? And it's a good thing, but I call that kind of millionaire a volatile millionaire because you see the crypto systems are very volatile. In one minute, it can be ten thousand dollars. In just two minutes after your rejoicing. It can be 100 bucks. So you have money, but you don't truly really have it. How do you migrate from being a volatile millionaire to being an actual millionaire? Now I'm going to tie everything together. So I talked about temporary jobs. I talked about contracts while the contract is on, money is coming. While, you know, a certain season, you're in a certain place, and there's a constant flow of money, and you feel like a millionaire. Okay, now, whatever is temporary, whatever income, no matter the volume that comes to you, whatever income is based on the temporary arrangement, I will like to classify the kinds of millionaires from that kind of setting as volatile millionaires because the income can stop, right? The income can stop and all you have is what you have and how you have used what you made. So you're not truly a millionaire until you know how to transition from temporary sources of income or unstable sources of income to stable or permanent sources of income. How does the crypto trader or the cryptocurrency holder move from being a volatile millionaire to becoming an actual millionaire? Because in one minute, he has $100,000 in his wallet. And just when he has announced to his friends and has told them to meet him at Transcorp for a party, by the time they get there, it's $150. How does he even run away now? <laughs> you know? But what can he do? One of the biggest mistakes people make in trading, whether Forex, crypto, is they do not know when to liquidate their assets. They do not know how to liquidate, to what extent you should liquidate. I think that if you have made up to $10,000, you know, take out 9000 Use the other 1000 to buy other coins that may be promising, may have a future. That's if you know how to ascertain what, you know, convert the $9,000 into money that can be used, money that you can use for an investment. Let me tell you this. No matter how much investment you have in crypto, hear me and hear me well. If you don't have real estate, you don't have real investment. One of the ways to, to convert money and put it in something that is very likely to continue to appreciate is to move it from temporary resources into a permanent place. Buy land. Land will always appreciate in value. You might say, oh, yeah, but it's not the biggest investment. It's not the one that gives you the most money. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about securing what you've labored for so far. Land will continue to appreciate in value. All the lands that people are selling in some places for 20 million, 30 million for a piece. In fact, for half a piece. People bought the full pieces for 100,000, 150 when they bought those things. 
They are selling them now for 20, 30 million for half a piece. When the full 100 by 100 was bought for about 150,000 or 200,000 a long time ago. What investment is going to pay you that? You need to have something to your name that is real. That's why it's called real estate. The other ones, they work, but they are not real. They can fizzle out any moment. Buy land. Even if it's a quarter plot, buy it. Put something on it. And start developing with vision. In this city right now, okay, I have, yes, please stand. Where's Achi? Stand. So these people are professional land and housing agents. I want to ask questions. Highbrow, one bedroom flat. What's the highbrow? Let's start from highbrow. How much? One bedroom. One bedroom means one room and one parlor. How much? 600, 500 currently. What's the highest you've seen? One bedroom. Highbrow. One million. Excuse me, people. Did you hear? One bedroom. That's one bedroom, one door, you enter the parlor, and you come back into the one bedroom. From 500,000 to 1 million in this city. In this city, 500,000 to 1 million. Mm, one bedroom. So if I had 20 units of one bedroom, let's take an average 500 to 1 million, let's take 700, right? Let's even imagine I was charging, I was a real nice guy, landlord, you know, and I was charging 700,000. 10 units will be 7 million. 20 units will be 14 million that I do not need to do anything for. It is not subject to anything rising or falling. It is not subject to dollar rates, not subject to nothing. It is subject to me calling the tenant. Oh boy, I've not seen your alert. <laughs> it makes sense. That is a very good complementary solid income. Can that man be said not to be a millionaire? How? And if you had three, four, five properties like that. I'm not done asking you guys questions. Self-con, highbrow, well-finished, 500,000. This down, self-con, that's just one room that you can measure like this. 500,000. 500,000. Okay, thank you guys. Sit down. 500,000. So let's even imagine I wasn't interested in the one bedroom flat. And I stretched myself to have 30 units. 30 units of one bedroom, sorry, one self coins each. At 500,000, that's 15 million a year. Use income from temporary sources to establish investments that are permanent in nature. That's the way you always see your money. That's, that's the way you always see your money. It has address. Number two, Akoma Lane. You come, you can see. Yes, this is my property. <laughs> you know, this, and it's there. Start thinking like that. And for those of you who are in a season of your life where money is coming with ease, money is coming from left, right, and center, including students. Like 72 uncles can send you the same school fee. <laughs> Don't tell me yesterday you can't tight. You should be tightening more because you are any more than people who are working. <laughs> true or true, it's true. You can buy land. We've had students in this church own land from good teaching. Yes. Stop thinking about S23 Ultra. That's not what you should be thinking about right now. 
In due course, you will have it. This thing is $1,300. That's not what you need right now. For me, it's a workstation. It's an extension of my office. Wherever I am in the world, I can work from there with ease. It has the features and facilities that allows me to do stuff with ease. The camera is 200 megapixel. So you see, you can shoot stuff better than some camcorders. You know, so if I need to send a video, if I need to do a thing, if I need to... At some point, you will need it, and it's not going to be luxury. It's just going to be part of your work tools. Okay? But that's not what you need now. Your aim shouldn't be to own S23 Ultra or to own the iPhone 15, you know? And even if it comes as a gift, at some level and at some seasons in your life, convert the gifts to investment. And what I mean is, if you really don't need it, sell it for a good price and put the money somewhere where you can keep making money so that in the future you can keep buying iPhones, don't buy an iPhone and you don't have idea. You get what I'm saying? Listen, I'm going to tell you the truth as I begin to round this up. I care about you genuinely and I want to see you succeed. We're teaching and I'm sure some people see maybe places where you need to make adjustments places you, you may have made mistakes in time past, but we can start afresh. This is the beginning of another year. We can start afresh. We can hold our hands together and say, let's succeed together. Do you understand what I'm saying? This is the kind of mindset we have that helps us strive and excel. This is the kind of mindset that helps us engage the forward mobility. Don't live your life to impress somebody else. Be a smart, quiet guy who's thinking deep and strategizing. Don't let anybody put you down because you don't have some kind of phone. Who pays them for owning a phone? You own an iPhone 15. He owns an iPhone. You own a nose phone. What does it, what does it matter? What matters is taking your time. Buy only what you need for now. And leave the extra for investment. In the process of time, the guy with the iPhone who has no idea will break the, skin, the screen and not be able to fix it while you are buying iPhones as gifts for people. Oh, did you hear what I said? It's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time. Grow into a solid guy. I said the other day, don't make 100000 and use 82000 to buy a shoe and end up tracking with it and spoiling it. <laughs> know where you are per time. You might be in a place where all you need is solid knockabout. The one resistance to the effects of friction. Like instead of the shoe wearing out, it's wearing out the stones. <laughs> oh, come on, people. Let's keep it real now. And then you have one or two shoes for special occasions. Be forward minded this year. It is possible. Start pricing land. Leave all those sites for phones for now. Start pricing land. Start pricing land. There are places where the city is growing into. The city hasn't reached there yet, but land is a bit affordable there. Go there and price land. The next five, six years when you're truly ready to build, your land would have appreciated in value. You can sell a piece and use that money to develop the other piece. Come on, be smart, man. This thing is no rocket science. Go and price land. Even if you can't buy it now, start pricing it so that you conquer the amount in your head. I had to tell you at such and such place, land is two million. 
What is two million? It's 500,000 times four. What is two million? It's 200,000 times 10. Is there an arrangement where I can pay install mentally? Start thinking. Look, let me tell you, the day you possess your first land, your thinking will shift. I kid you not. Your thinking will shift. Somehow, you will stop thinking like a chicken. You just start thinking like an eagle. Something just shifts to know your own land that has your name on it. You've surveyed it. This land is without encumbrance. This is your land. You just start thinking differently. You start thinking differently. Don't drink away your investment. In closing, your money flows into your habits, flows into your priorities, flows into your desires, flows into your appetites. If you can put roadblocks on your appetites, check your priorities, check your habits, you will control your money. I'm telling you, you will control your money. And let me promise you, it may look like lavishing your money on some kinds of things today makes you happy. I promise you, you will be happier if you looked back and saw that you had a certain amount of money in your account, you had maybe land, you had, you know, things working good, you will be a lot, lot, lot happier. This happiness of beer and pepper soup, it doesn't last. That's the truth. It doesn't last. It doesn't last. Does it last more than 30 minutes or one hour? It may not. It may not. And that happiness comes with collateral damage. You have to buy for others. <laughs> yeah, you have to buy for others. The real people who drink don't drink alone. They don't drink alone. The real people, the real, the real drinkers, they don't drink alone. You know, they don't drink alone. You have to buy for others. Drive through Mary Slessor. All those Dogoyaro trees. Neem. Dogoyaro, I mean, it's Neem. N-E-E-M. That's a real English name. Okay. So, under those Neem trees that have lights and bulbs and tables underneath, you rarely find anyone sitting alone unless they are waiting for somebody. Nobody drinks alone. What if you disappeared from there for a bit? Change your phone number. <laughs> Am I helping a brother today? Yes. And tell yourself, I've got my life to live. 2024. Sincerely, I stand with you in faith that 2024 will not be like the other years. You may have lost opportunities in time past. You may have goofed messed up in time past, but this is a new beginning for all of us. We can succeed together and it requires discipline. It requires discipline. It requires discipline. No money is too small, no money is too big. It's what you do with it that can shape your life and shape your future. With 100,000, you can grow yourself into your millions. Go back and think of all the questions I asked you in this class. And I started with, what do you sell? What problems do you solve? I know the problems I solve. I know the problems I solve. And part of my responsibility is just to improve on my problem-solving ability. The problems I solve connect me with goodwill. The problems I solve connect me with money. The problems I solve, what problems do you solve? If you're a speaker, are you what hearing? Who wants to hear you? What kinds of people hear you? What kinds of invites do you get? Praise the Lord. Let's continue next Sunday. Someone is clapping like a millionaire. That's why. I think you can differentiate from how Tanzanians clap and millionaires clap, right? Let's try it one more time.
Repeat after me. I am a success. Think about it. Think about yourself as you're saying it. Say, I am a success. Now, say it with a sense of like you're already there and you're just sharing the testimony. Not like you're prophesying it. Okay? Imagine that you're already there and you're just sharing the testimony. I am a success. I am blessed of the Lord. I'm blessed with wisdom. I'm blessed with favor. I am helped of the Lord. Money multiplies in my hands. Oh, somebody. Money multiplies in my hands. Nothing dies in my hands. Nothing dies in my life. I'm an incubator. I incubate possibilities. I incubate ideas. I have solutions. I solve problems on high levels. I am highly sought for. I am highly paid. Now say this. I forbid stupidity. I reject foolishness. I won't go back to my mistakes of the past. I exercise self-control. I am a good governor of my resources. I will keep going forward. I will keep going upwards. In the name of Jesus. Say it boldly in the name of Jesus. Whoa. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Shall we rise? I feel like going another one hour. Wow. Look for a millionaire around you and shake hands with them. Shake hands with them. Tell them it's good to have you in the club. It's good to have you in the club. In the millionaire's club. Oh, come on, people. Come on. It's good to have you in the millionaire's club. Now, let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. You see, tomorrow, Joyful is going to make 100 million and decide, you come now, I'm sharing my testimony. And decide to come and give me 10 million and someone is going to be angry. They won't know I was teaching her right, helping her manage her money. Huh? I'm praying for her. They won't understand it. Uduak is going to make some crazy money tomorrow and then drive this Prado 2023. And park it. And someone is going to say, see that pastor? He's stealing the church money. <laughs> they won't know that this is the church money. <laughs> Hallelujah. Whoa. Are there some successful people in this house? Yeah. Listen, when we talk about money in church, it's not for clothes and shoes. You don't need to be rich to wear good clothes and shoes. We're thinking about bigger things. You see, some of you standing here, you own international schools. Yeah. I'm looking out for the day when I'm going to start my university. Mine is going to be a hybrid university. Special curriculum. I'm already thinking about some of the courses that will be different from the regular. The teaching is some very powerful things. Psychology of leadership. Transgenerational relevance. When you release people from that kind of university, they just talk like they rule the world. And they are the ones who will rule the world. Believe it or not, you are becoming something. You just don't know. You are becoming something. Stay with the curriculum. You are becoming something. By the middle of this year, people who had known you last year will start complaining about you. Because you're not in the places where they used to know you to be. You're not talking like the person they used to know you to talk like. You don't look like the person they used to know you to. Then they will accuse you that because God has blessed you now, you have forsaken them. No. Levels have changed. You've moved. And they don't even realize. Now, they should have been asking you, how did you come to 
be talking different, behaving different. Now you have more. That's what they should be asking. But small-minded people have a way of coming from the attack side. You were not like this before. You were nicer than this. Uh, you used to sit around with us. But I can't keep sitting around with you. You're failing. Is the truth the truth or not? And it hurts, but that is what it is. They said, if all your friends are broke and you still have them as friends, you are not wise now. You are not wise. Look for one person who has broken out. Right? The ones this person has are broke. Look for one that has broken out and follow him. You can't be sticking around with people who are broke and hoping to learn wisdom. Wisdom to be broke? No. Look for someone who has broken out. Stick with them and learn wisdom. The wisdom to rise. I prophesy over you today. This year is your year of rising. Amen. I said this year is your year of rising. Amen. There are people standing here today who will be, who will be commanders of conglomerates. May the wisdom of God to manage abundance be released upon you in Jesus' name. May the wisdom of God to manage systems be released upon you in the precious name of Jesus. I pray for you that as you leave this place, that even your train of thoughts will be altered. In the precious name of Jesus, the Bible says the thoughts of the righteous tend upwards. I pray that your thinking will become elevation dimension thinking. In the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Mark your bank account. All of you. All of you listening to me today. Take note of your bank account. And take responsibility from today. You won't spend carelessly from today. You will not. No, no, no. Nice guy this and that and that. No. Take responsibility. Take responsibility. Whatever God puts in your hand is an opportunity for your rising. And I don't care what is there, whether it's 10,000, 20,000, 15, 50. Hold it and think. Stop, pray, think. Lord, order my steps. Lord, guide me. Show me what I need to do. God answers prayers. Show me what I need to do. Give me ideas. Give me ideas. Give me ideas. And when he starts doing you pepper soup, pepper soup, hold it down. Hold it down. Hold it down and refuse it. A day will come when you have a goat tree. Do you understand? You have a small ranch with cows. You can eat any kind of soup, pepper soup that you want. Give it some time. Give yourself time to rise. Your rising has come. In the name of Jesus. Do I have a witness in this house? Oh, come on people.